Hello friends and thanks for joining me today. We are going to look at the miter saw, the compound miter saw, how it works and how to operate it safely. All right friends, so this is one of our miter saws. This is the other miter saw that we have. Both perform very well. They're different brands, but they're essentially the exact same thing. It is a saw blade with a motor connected to a table. So this is the table. This is a miter saw because you can change the angle of what you want to cut. So here we can change the angle. We have it right now at zero degrees, but we can loosen this handle and then turn it to whatever we want it, whatever angle we want. Right now I moved it to 45 degrees so I could cut a 45 degree here. So I have this two by four. Well, let's get this smaller one here. I have this two by four. I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut on it. What I need to do is make sure I have some safety glasses. These are my sunglasses, but they also are rated safety glasses. So I wear these a lot because they keep my eyes safe and shielded from the sun. And I need some hearing protection. Always a good idea to have hearing protection when you run this saw. So I'm wearing my hearing protection, my eye protection, and I have my saw set at 45. When you run this saw, you want to bring it out, well obviously turn it on, and then bring it out, and then down, and then back in. The way this blade moves is like this, and if you go down and then try to come out, it has a tendency to run on you, and it can be very surprising, it can be kind of dangerous, we don't wanna do that, we wanna start it, bring it out nice and slow, all the way down, and then all the way in, and let the saw blade come to a stop before we um, get our lumber. I had a saw once, and it was on a job site, and I was doing a bunch of cutting, and I was trying to go quick, and it would, the electric brake on it would make the saw go boom when it stopped, go Arr! And so I reached in, got this piece, and, go, and it caught me right there. And I've had a scar there for, man, 25 years. It's been a long time, probably 24 years. So anyway, the way you do this, you're gonna start it, bring it down, go in, let it come to a stop, and then get your piece of wood. have a nice 45 degree cut here. Look at that. Start of my picture frame or not. So what friends you need to make sure you don't do is you don't want to do this fast. It's not a wham. That is super hard on the blade. This blade has little carbide teeth on it that help do the cutting, that do most of the cutting. When you're really abusive to them and you go bam, go really fast, it knocks those off and makes the blade jump. We like to take care of our tools and make them last a long time. So we wanna do it nice and slow. Another tip when using this is you don't want to have a piece of lumber that is too short to where you have, you have to hold it really close to the blade. If you have a piece of lumber, a piece of trim or a piece of scrap or whatever that you have to hold, really close, there's a better way to do it. And that way is with a handsaw. So you wanna make sure when you use this saw that you're holding it tight against this fence, this back fence. You wanna make sure there's no debris or anything back here keeping you from the angle you wanna cut. Push the saw back against the fence and then make sure you have a solid grasp on the wood and you're pushing it tight against the back fence. If you have a gap, that saw will push it against there, hurt the blade, could possibly hurt you. 
So make sure it's tight against the fence and then start it. There's a safety button right here on the saw. You push the safety button, then you pull the trigger. You can see how it jumps there when the electric brake kicks in. So keep those fingers away from here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this piece and make it 90 degrees or the zero angle. And so <clears throat> we push the, the safety button in, then we pull the trigger. And you can see sometimes it kicks off that scrap piece if it's short. That's okay as long as you're not trying to get that piece. Don't try to get a piece that's cut while that blade is moving. If it throws it and we have to cut another piece, who cares? We'll get another piece. Be safe. Keep staying a member of the 10 finger club. We don't wanna lose those digits, friends. So the miter safe is pretty safe. We have to make sure we don't have any loose objects. This lanyard comes apart when it's any little pressure is applied. So that's why I wear this one. It's a breakaway lanyard. If something were to happen and pull it in, it comes apart and it doesn't suck me in there. But I make sure I don't have any loose clothing. I, don't, I make sure my sleeves are up or I'm wearing short sleeves. I don't have anything that's going to be sucked into here and pulled me in. And when I make this cut, I'm going down nice and slow and then letting it come to a stop and then getting my, my lumber out of there. We wanna make sure our fingers never ever get into this area. This, this area, this plastic piece right here, never let your fingers get into that area at all. So our fingers, our hands should be over here, away from the blade, holding that lumber against the fence, nice and easy down and in if it's a long piece. This is an extended table, so you can cut longer stuff. You can come all the way out, then down, and then push in. Nice and slow, friends. We're not in a rush. To get in a rush when you're working with safety, that's how accidents happen, and I, I would guarantee you'll regret it when you do it. So just slow down, take your time, do the job correctly and safely, and do it right. Another thing, friends, we need to be aware of, sometimes on different saws, it moves differently. So the other saw, you just tighten it up and lock it in place. This saw, it has a lock button right here where it can lock at a certain angle. So you need to make sure you move that up. And then there's like this little button here that you pull up, then you can rotate that to different miters. If it's hard to rotate, it might mean that there's a bunch of sawdust back here from previous cuts hindering the rotation. So just clean that up, then you can rotate it freely. So when we have it rotated, and I'm gonna put it on um, 45 degrees this way, and you can lock it down and I can cut my miter. Now when we cut miters, when we cut, especially when we cut small trim, the saw has a tendency to pull that wood in just a little bit. So you need to make sure you're really tight. You never wanna put your arm across like this. I don't care if you're right-handed, left-handed, whatever, your right hand should be here, your left hand should be here, or vice versa. Your right hand on the piece of wood, your left hand up here. This has that safety button trigger. You should not be holding it like this and going across. That's gonna be end in a bad, bad situation. It'll be a bad day. So make sure you hold on to that. When you cut this miter, this wood will have a tendency to be pulled in just a little bit. So you need to make sure you have a really good grasp and you go down nice and slow. If you go down fast, it hurts the blade and it has a tendency to pull it in and it's gonna make a very poor cut. When I go down nice and slow, it'll make a nice crisp cut. So make sure you always, when you operate this, have ear protection, have eye protection, watch 
where your hands are at, make sure they're not in the path of the blade, and be very careful. This is an awesome tool, but it can cause damage to you if you let it. So make sure you stay safe, folks. Do the hard work because hard work is its own reward. And thanks for watching.